Squarespace gives you everything you need to create an amazing website. Starting at just $8 per month, the Squarespace service gives you all the tools you need to design your website without needing to learn code. That price also includes hosting, and it's so good that I actually use Squarespace for the Geekanoids website. You can try it free for 14 days by visiting squarespace.com forward slash Geekanoids. Hi everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids, and this is my full review of the Dell Alienware X51 PC. You can see it sitting on my desk here, a very, very compact unit. Now in this video, I'm not gonna be running over all of the specifications and performance, because I've already made videos giving you my first impressions as well as a benchmark test as well. So wait till the end of this video, there'll be some links at the end and you can click on those to see my other videos on the X51. In this video, I'm gonna be giving you my general opinion and experiences with the X51. And I'll kick off with some of the not so good bits. Now, first of all, the really not so good bits is I didn't really like the mouse and the keyboard that were included with the X51. So with regards to the keyboard, I swapped that out for my trusty Logitech. This is my Logitech here. This is a K340 wireless keyboard. Works extremely well and much better than the bundled one that came with the PC. The other thing I didn't like was the mouse and I'm still using the same mouse at the moment. This was the one that Dell supplied with the machine and I will be swapping that out with a couple of gaming mice to bring you reviews of those in future videos. I've got one from Rockat or Rocat, and I've also got a Corsair gaming mouse as well. So I'll be bringing you reviews of those in future videos. I've also got a gaming keyboard from Corsair, uh, which again, I'm gonna test instead of using the Logitech, I think it's more fitting to the machine. So watch out for that in future videos. Now, the other things that I didn't like, and let's just get these bad things out of the way first of all, the optical drive on here does not work properly. So to date, at the time of recording this, I've had one engineer visit. Uh, he replaced the drive with another one and it still doesn't work properly. The first drive that was in here wouldn't read CDs or DVDs at all. It would take them into the machine and either keep hold of them and not eject them, or it would read them for a little while and then start making chirping sounds. So they've swapped that out for another optical drive and this optical drive will read CDs fine and DVDs so I can install software, but it will not eject the discs from the eject button. So you can push this eject button all you want and it won't eject the disc. You have to eject it via Windows 7. So not a great experience on that front. The other thing that I didn't really like uh, isn't down to the hardware, basically. It's down to Windows 7 again, unfortunately. Now you all know I'm not a big Windows 7 fan or user. And I'd say this in most of my coverage to do with Windows-based PCs. And that is that since uh, starting this machine up, I did the initial Windows updates, which you're gonna have to do on any machine. And then since then, I've had to do about 63 updates. Some of those were in a Dell control panel, so it was recommended for the Alienware X51 rather than being specific to Windows. And others were Windows updates. And I just find that unacceptable. It's very intrusive during my testing to have to keep applying these updates or when I'm shutting down the machine to have to wait for it to apply the updates before it shuts down. That's just part of Windows. I know that happens. I know on the Mac platform you have to do updates as well. I just find it very intrusive, but that's not to do with the hardware. Moving on, let's move on to the good bits. There's a Core i5 processor in here running at three gigahertz and the performance is extremely good. During those benchmark tests, it performed brilliantly. And then since performing those benchmarks, I've been using this to test some video editing software. I've got some software from, from Corel. I've also got Sony uh, Vegas Pro, and I've been testing those, and they've worked beautifully, really run a nice performance, no issues with lag or anything. The memory in here is eight gigabytes of RAM, and that seems to be perfectly adequate. And it's also got one gigabyte of dedicated uh, video memory. So the performance side of this machine is brilliant. The actual build quality is really good. It's got this gloss finish on the front, two nice side panels, and the side panels, you can actually change the color of the lighting. And you can, of course, change the little uh, 
alien eye lights as well, so you can change the color of those. So it's got a little bit of customization. Plenty of connectivity. Uh, with regards to, to noise, yes, the fans do ramp up. It can sound quite noisy at times, especially when you're really pushing it to its limits. Now that's only intrusive if you're really maybe doing a lot of video editing or playing a high-end game. And yeah, you can hear them. If you're just playing a movie or just letting it stream a video, then the fans don't really ramp up too much. You can hear it just idling in the background here at the moment. And if I just take a pause to listen, yeah, you can hear it's there, but the sound is not too bad at all. Now, what did surprise me with the X51 was the pricing. Now, normally when you look at the Alienware range of PCs, you do pay a premium price. But with this one, which is what I would call the mid-range one, you can get a Core i3, a Core i5, or a Core i7. Now, this is the mid-range Core i5. It's coming in at £799 in the UK, or $949 in the US. Now, that is, yes, a little premium. You could get more for your money if you went elsewhere. But this is a brilliantly designed machine. Now, it isn't too upgradable. You can change out the hard drive if you wanted to put a higher specification one in there. You could swap out the graphics card. Um, now, there is a, a small problem with swapping out the graphics card, and that's the fact that we've only got a 300 watt power supply inside this PC. So you have to be careful with your selection of graphics cards. You're not gonna be able to go up to a very high-end one that consumes a lot of power. But if you wanted to, and you were careful with your selection, you could upgrade the graphics card in here as well. So overall, a great PC, good pricing, good performance, and certainly at this 799 price point, I can definitely recommend it if you want a Windows 7 based machine that will play most games and turns over a good level of performance for your other work. Now, you all know me, I do a lot of video editing, and for that, even though it's not designed for video editing, it's more of a gaming machine, it is a brilliant choice. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please do click that like button, it really does help me. And I will see you all in the next video.